Well, give me a team and a good lead dog and a sled that's built so fine. And let me race those miles to know 1049. Then when I get back to my home, hey, I can tell my tale. I did, I did, I did, yeah, I did a right trail. Now, my name is Bruce Maroney. I've been a volunteer pilot for the Iditarod Air Force for over 30 years. I've been flying these little airplanes in Alaska during the winter for over 40 years. I thought I'd share with some of my Iditarod pilot uh, comrades on the pre-systems I've used over the last 40 years and some of the advantages and disadvantages and then what I'm using now to preheat my airplane or keep my airplane warm during the winter. None of these uh, preheat systems that I use are recommended necessarily. Some of, them, of these preheat systems have led to the loss of, of an airplane burning up. So I don't necessarily recommend that you use any of these systems. I'm showing you what I have used in the past and what I am currently using. And you decide for yourself what's best going to work for you. I've got the 185 parked outside, so let's go take a look and I'll show you how I approach some of this. This video will not have anything to do with the winter flying. We'd be here for a week discussing winter operations. This is just about how to keep the snow and ice off your airplane and how to keep your engine warm or preheat your engine. Okay, here I've got 04 Fox all set up for winter flying. Other than the different modifications that you can do to these airplanes to make winter flying a little bit easier, there's basically two components in getting your airplane ready. One, you got to keep the snow and ice off of it. Two, you've got to be able to preheat the engine so that you can safely start it. For engine covering, at the very least, you need wing covers, tail covers, and an engine cover. Additionally, if you've got a windshield cover and a prop cover, that makes things a lot easier. Last thing you want to be doing is scraping frost off of a plexiglass windshield, and a prop cover helps reduce the heat loss from the engine. So keeping the airplane covered is essential. There was a time that we could polish frost and fly the airplane, but the current FAA regulations uh, adopt a clean airplane concept and snow, all snow and ice has to be removed from the airplane. When I first started flying my PA-12, my wing covers were a bunch of old sheets. And then I graduated to the nylon covers and nylon covers were great. The only problem was in the wind, they would start flying and that created havoc. They would shred and balloon off the airplane. So then they developed wing covers that had spoiler panels on top of them. And those worked pretty efficiently, but the, the spoiler panels tended to make the wing covers quite bulky. And so that was a, a problem. These wing covers are slotted. And I'll open it up. Okay, I pulled the wing cover back a little bit. So you can see about every 18 inches, there's a slotted panel in the wing cover. This reduces the chance of these wing covers ballooning up on the wing when they're uh, kept on during, during windy conditions. The slotted wing covers, they do about the best job. It's a UV resistant fabric and the tail cover is a form-fitted tail cover, also UV resistant fabric. And these are manufactured by Alaska Wing Covers out of Eagle River. Linda and her girls make these and they do a fabulous job. In my opinion, these are about the best wing covers you could have. This is also an Alaska Wing Cover engine cover and they'll make it to form fit to your airplane, slotted for the ski cables. And of course I've got a windshield cover and this is an older prop cover it's from Tannis aircraft so phase one is keep the snow and ice and frost off your airplane you're allowed to have a little bit of frost on the fuselage but all wing airfoil and control services must be clear and free of all snow and ice before you fly Let's talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the preheat systems that I've used in my 40 years up here and how they've worked for me. I don't necessarily recommend that you use any of these. Some of these are quite dangerous. Airplanes have been lost using some of these systems, so be careful. My first airplane was a PA-12 that I operated during the winter on Wesco wood skis on a grass strip on Farmer's Loop up in Fairbanks. 
And this is my original preheat. This is nothing more than a Coleman camp stove that runs on Blazo or white gas. And I'd go down to the airplane at six in the morning and light this off and set it in the snow, get it cooking. And I had a, oh, I think it was about an eight or 10 inch stove pipe that necked down. And I had a bunch of holes drilled around the bottom of the stove pipe. And then this would go up under the, the uh, engine cover. And after about two hours of this thing running, that was about the length of the tank on it, you'd have a nice warm engine and then uh, starting was no problem. So this is my first preheat. And I used this for a lot of years until uh, I had access to electrical plugs and then we started installing these different electrical heaters uh, in our airplanes. And that by far is the best way to go utilizing an electrical heater. Okay, so I got the Coleman Survival Cat. They don't make these anymore, but I think you could still find them on eBay. And so this is a catalytic heater. They actually make a small one. They make one that's bigger, but it will not fit through my oil door. Now, a drawback to this is you need to put this into a warm engine, and it will keep an engine warm for about eight hours. It's a catalytic uh, heater, and so you need a warm propane bottle and this unit warm. You get the catalytic heater started, then you set this down through your oil door in the engine, and this will last for about seven, eight hours. And so if you finish flying in the early evening, late afternoon, a couple hours later you put this under the cowling, this will keep the engine somewhat warm through the night for you, or at 20 below you should still have 50, 40 degrees of oil temp and be able to start your engine. So this is good for keeping the engine warm. Since they don't make the survival cat anymore, I started looking around for another propane option to keep the engine warm. And so I came up with a little buddy, I think they call it. And they've got a couple of different sizes. This is the smaller one. I took the whole thing apart, ditched all the plastic and everything except for the actual unit. Looks like something that belongs in a, in a spaceship. Pretty funny. But what I did is I bypassed the tip over switch. There's a tip over switch here. I just tied a piece of wire across it so I bypassed the tip, tip over switch. So this thing will operate on its side. The bottles will only last for about four hours, but this puts out enough heat that you possibly might be able to preheat with it. At least you'll be able to get four hours worth of heat into the engine. And if you put this on late at night and got out early in the morning, you might, uh, you might still have an engine warm enough to, to, uh, to start and not have to go through a, a big preheat process. And this works pretty easily. It's got a self lighter on it. So the heater is lit. And, one, and it's all preset. Once it senses that it's hot enough, it'll uh, take off. So there's the little buddy that's operating. One thing you'll see right away is look at that, there's a flame. So the drawback of using this in an engine cowling is you have an open flame. So you want to be very careful in utilizing this and be very comfortable that, you know, how you're using it and where you're placing it. Uh, isn't going to result in the loss of your airplane. I've never used this as a preheat source. I kind of played with it. It is an option and it generates a lot of heat. So the propane options are really meant to keep the engine warm because propane, if you put either of these into a cold soaked engine after about 20-30 minutes the regulator will freeze and you'll lose your heat source. So I only recommend using these propane ones in a engine warm so that you can help maintain some heat level in the engine. Now these units have been around for a lot of years and these are a really good preheat unit. This is the Red Dragon. This is a propane fired heater. It's got uh, a striker that automatically lights it. You need a 12 volt battery to run the motor and then you run some ducting, scat tubing or stove piping up into the engine cowling for preheat. And this is a fast preheater. This thing puts out almost 50,000 BTUs. If you've got a cold soaked engine at 20 below, using a warm propane bottle, this thing will preheat an engine in just an hour. And you wouldn't necessarily carry this around in your airplane with you because it's a pretty heavy unit. That box in the background is actually the storage box for it. So that's the uh, Red Dragon, another heater option I've used. Here's another preheat system that is uh, a very good system and it is 
And this is the backup system I carry with me all the time during the win winter, and that's the Northern Companion. It's made uh, by a guy out in Wasilla, and it's really an efficient system. I really like it. So the Northern Companion is housed in a stainless steel cylinder, and then you've got a scat tubing that would go up underneath the cow flap. It's comprised of uh, just a standard MSR stove, and it comes with the uh, heating tray for heating water that's part of the kit. So now you have your survival stove as part of your uh, preheat system. You light up the MSR stove, put it in, close it up, and this thing will run on several, several hours. And so with this up in the cowling, you can easily in two hours preheat the engine uh, quite nicely. So what we have currently in this day and age, we've got two preheat systems. You can either use an outside system where you're using an outside heat source to preheat your aircraft, whether it's another companion or you're using a, 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 an old type Coleman stove or the Red Dragon. These are all outside heat sources and a lot of them involve open flame which can be hazardous, and some of them involve propane, which can be problematic. The other type of heat system, and pretty much everybody uses this stand H, is an internal heat system, an electric heat system. I always carry, I have two heat systems in the airplane, I have an internal heat system, and then I carry a backup system in case the internal heat system fails. So the internal heat system comprised of a heat system on the engine, and then an electrical source to power it. If you got electrical power plug in 110 volts so that solves the problem if you don't you need a generator you got to carry a generator and so I'll talk about that an internal heat system in my opinion is the safest way to go and I think uh, I don't think there'd be any argument there uh, the very simplest internal preheat system would be comprised of a silicone pad heater this is a small 50 watt heater I, if I was to use only a silicone pad heater, I would either use a 200 or 300 watt silicone pad. You get a layer of silicone on the pad and then you attach it to the bottom of your oil pan and secure it for 24 hours with like duct tape. And once you pull the duct tape off, this is adhered permanently to your engine oil pan. And then you can route this up to your oil door and you've got your, your engine preheat set up. If you're using only a silicone pad on your on your engine. If you're preheating a cold soaked engine, you're going to need to leave that 200 or 300 watts plugged in all night to be able to preheat that engine sufficiently to, to start without possibly causing damage. So this would be the very minimum you want on your airplane. The next step up is a designed preheat system for these aircraft engines. And there's pretty much two systems on the market right now. Uh, the Tannis is one system, and the Tannis uses a bayonet type heater probe that plugs into the cylinder head temp port on your cylinder. Well, like a lot of us, we have six point cylinder head temps, so we can't give up six ports. On our aircraft, I have the Reef system, and the Reef has silicone bands with this material on it surrounding the base of each cylinder, and these are 50 watts each. And then in addition, additionally, there's a 100 or 200 watt silicone pad heater that is glued to the oil pan. In this case, you have 500 watts of heating power uh, directly to the, to the engine. This will preheat a cold soaked engine in about four hours. When using an internal system with a remote generator, a system that I found that really works quite well and I thought I'd introduce it to you so that you can uh, see if it might work for your application. Okay, here is my preheat system. Very, very efficient. We've got a Honda EU2000 generator that's plugged into the plug-in for the preheat, the electric preheat. I've got a 1500 watt heater on the floor underneath the dash to keep the instrument warm. I've actually had that heater turned down to the 500 watt setting. So with the 450 watt reef system plus the 500 watt heater inside the cabin, I'm pulling about a thousand watts. And the generator's not working too hard. With this setup, you could uh, preheat two airplanes. If I disconnect the heater in the cabin, 
then I'm only pulling 450 watts. This one generator will carry three airplanes at that at that point. So there's the EU 2000, and I've got it hooked up to two-gallon jury jug. This will run all night. This should run about 12 hours and keep the airplane warm through the night, especially in sub-zero conditions. We never want to let the engine get cold soaked. It causes too many problems. Now I'll uh, go through some of it. And a lot of these early Cessnas, uh, you can see this is the DC plug-in for the DC power. That's typical on a lot of early Cessnas. That uh, DC power plug has been removed and now I've got my preheat set up is here. I've got the plug-in for my preheat that goes up to my TANA system and I've also got a little LED indicator light that shows that it's powered. Very nice system. Whether you have an installed system like this or your preheat plugs running up to the oil, the oil door really makes no difference. It's just a personal preference. You can also see I have an interior heater underneath the dash. When you're starting these engines at cold temperatures, you're forcing the gyros to operate at super cold temperatures, and that can be very problematic in, uh, in reducing the life of these, of these gyros. So what I will often do is in the morning, a couple hours before I fly, I'll come and put this under the dash, plug it in, and let a little heat rise up and warm up the, the uh, aircraft instruments. You can even drape a coat or a towel over the dash and down over the uh, the yoke to kind of keep the heat up into there if you'd like but this is highly recommended uh, to save your instruments and with this heater on a five on the low setting it pulls about 500 watts and the t reef system is pulling about 500 watts that's a thousand watts so the Honda 2000 could carry two two aircraft set up like this let me show you how I have set up my fuel system and my breather system on this Honda generator so we don't have problems in sub-zero temperatures. Okay, I'm going to talk specifically about operating the Honda EU2000 for preheating or keeping your airplane plugged in overnight. Uh, there's two problems. One, the fuel tank isn't big enough. You don't want to have to come out at midnight, 2 in the morning and refuel the generator. And the other thing is the engine breather on these, when it's like 20 below, the breather will freeze and the generator will quit. Depending on what type of generator system you're using, you'll have to figure out the, your own shortcomings in those generators. There's an easy way around the fuel. So to fix the fuel problem, there's a, well, there's an expensive way. You need to get yourself an extra fuel cap for the top of the generator. And don't get the cap that has the on and off vent. You can get these caps off of eBay for 10 bucks from China. And it is a cap with a threaded uh, quarter inch pipe thread right in the cap. And then you can get a brass fitting connected to a hose. Go buy yourself an expensive boat tank and hook it up and away you go. The uh, fuel pump will pull the fuel into this uh, generator and it'll run for as long as you have fuel. The cheapest and easiest way to do it is Get yourself a cap, just like this, uh, quarter inch pipe uh, nipple to hose bib. This will thread onto the top of the generator, and then you can literally stick this right into a jury drug. And my way, I decided I didn't want an open jug. I didn't want to buy an expensive boat tank. So what I did, get your cap with a uh, hose bib threaded into the cap, a short piece of hose, I cut a small piece of uh, uh, aluminum, took the seal out of a regular jury drug with the cap, put it all together with a bungee around it holding it on the strut of the airplane and with the uh, with the extra gallon of fuel and the generator tank, this thing will run, run all night and I'm not carrying a boat tank I'm not having an open gas can with the hose in it. Well, here's the Honda EU2000 generator opened up. 
Here I have an extra spark plug in case the spark plug gets fouled and I've actually got a DC cable that will plug in because this is also has a plug-in for uh, a battery charger. But in addressing the breather issue, here's the engine breather. What the breather does, it pulls exhaust gases, or correction, what the breather does, it pulls crankcase gases and fumes of moisture out of the crankcase. All automobiles have this set up and so does the Honda generator. In our airplanes, our breathers are vented overboard, they're atmospheric. This breather goes to the induction system and so the carburetor is pulling this moisture and these gases and reburning them. And this is better for the environment and so that's why the breather is set like this. What happens is there's a lot of moisture in the crankcase as a product of combustion. This is an air-cooled engine at 20 below. The air circulating around here can freeze this breather. If this breather freezes and gets plugged up, the engine will quit. So how do we mitigate that? Well, the best way to mitigate it is go to Bailey's uh, Tool Rentals. They have a winter kit that's made for these Honda generators. And uh, the winter kit's 98 bucks, and they'll install it for one hour of labor, and that's $100. For 200 bucks. you can solve this problem. And this is replaced with a heated induction line that's got a little heater element, and it's plugged into the electrical system. Plus, this is also insulated. Now, whether you could just insulate this, if that would solve your problem, I don't know. But since uh, Honda has a winter kit, why not invest in the, in the winter kit? Other than a $200 cost for uh, doing the winterization kit for these Honda generators, how can we mitigate this problem? In our aircraft engines, in the top of the breather, we usually cut a little, uh, we drill a little quarter inch hole so that if the breather freezes, the engine isn't going to uh, back pressure and blow seals. In this type of uh, breather system, if you do that, if you cut that, or put a hole in it, you're going to get a lot of oily residue uh, inside the engine and that's not going to be good. Plus you want the engine drawing these these crankcase fumes out of the crankcase. This extends the engine life. Another way to mitigate it is build a box and surround this generator with some sort of a box. Well that's kind of a pain in the butt. And What you're trying to do is you want to reduce the amount of airflow going around that that breather. Another way to do it is drape something Here's some intake holes right by the breather. Drape something over here and lean something up against it or do something to reduce the airflow. And if you do this, that should help mitigate it. But the best way to mitigate it, get the breather kit from Honda and you'll never have a problem. To recap, phase one, you got to keep the snow and ice and frost off your airplane. Have a good cover system. At the very minimum, wing covers, tail cover, engine cover. Uh, Preheating the airplane or keeping your engine warm. Find a system that works for you. Be careful. Some of the systems could burn your airplane up. I have found a good system that works for me with the Honda generator or any small portable generator, but I use the Honda generator. I've mitigated the breather freezing problems and the auxiliary fuel tank, so that's pretty easy. And I've got my standby heat source, my Northern Companion, very reliable with the MSR stove. And I really actually have a third preheat. This is a 1500 watt heater that I just use for like an hour or so under the dash to preheat the instruments. You can get these in AIH for 23 bucks. It's all metal. Don't use plastic. So this is my preheat system. It works good for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. That's all I got. Way up in Alaska, the state that stands alone. There's a dog race run from Anchorage in the Nome. And it's a grueling race with a lightning pace Where the chilly winds do wail Beneath the northern lights cross snow and the ice And it's called the Iditarod Trail Well give me a team and a good lead dog And a sled that's built so fine And let me race those miles to Nome 1049 Then when I get back to my home Hey, I can tell my tale I did, I did